we're in prison, but we all have to realize that it's not the life that we all want. And it's up to us to decide that enough is enough. I can change my life. On the streets of Britain, times are hard, one way or another. And inside British prisons, inmates on sentence or remand agree there's no such thing as easy time. Hard on the inside, hard on the outside. And the day a prisoner gets released, maybe that's the hardest. The wall is a very hard place getting out of jail. Because there's no support, there's no one to kind of um, uh, guide you or support you back into the mainstream of, of the system. They walk out of jail with a little amount of money and that's the last for a week. They kind of send you off to emergency hostels where in these emergency hospitals there'd be like drink, drugs, alcohol. The only thing they know is crime. So basically, to survive, they got to commit crime. Tomorrow's People, a UK organisation that has already helped over 400,000 Britons back to work, aims to change all that. Tomorrow's People work with a whole range of people, people with health problems, people with mental health problems, people who are in danger of going into the criminal justice system, and those people who've been in it are desperate to get out of it. And more and more people are coming to us asking us to help them because what they actually want is to be in work and, and, and doing something meaningful with their lives. And so we commissioned some research. We looked all around the world at what people were doing for this client group. And we found many projects, but two in particular, that really inspired and excited us. San Patriano is an Italian community founded in 1978 to fix the broken lives of drug offenders and their families. Today, 1,800 ex-addicts receive medical and psychological care paid out of their own earnings as they work and learn valuable professional skills. 70% leave to find full-time work in that chosen skill. Only 10% relapse. 60 houses lodge families. 130 children live there with another 60 in the nursery. 3,000 prison hours have been commuted, saving the Italian government over £100 million. Every year, Three quarters of San Patriano's ex-addicts reintegrate within society. The ultimate fix. If education is freedom, maybe it's strange that British prisons nowadays provide prisoners with basic skills in language, literacy and numeracy, as well as practical knowledge in a range of subjects and careers. But when you're already on sentence, is that too little, too late? So long as I'm, I've started some kind of training in prison, and there's a, like a link once I leave, I can go and follow this on. And... Some people in jail, they um, really get on all the courses and learn a lot, but when they get released from jail, there's no help to point them in the right direction. Like, I, I've basically done a lot of courses, but I don't know what to do with the knowledge I got. Walking around money, but nowhere to go. Partner and kids gone, no job, no address. Back on the street, back on the blag. Life stays badly written. But in California, the script got changed. Not in Hollywood, in Delancey Street, San Francisco. The biggest first struggle is to get somebody to hope who has never had anything to hope for and to get them to believe that they have the strength to, to make dreams come true. Mimi Silbert co-founded Delancey Street in 1971 after graduating with PhDs in both criminology and psychology. She was dismayed by how ex-convicts failed to integrate back into society and decided to try a new approach. She named the project Delancey Street after the famous immigrant neighbourhood in New York where families travel to create new beginnings for themselves. Delancey Street represents that transition into a new world, a better life. Prison takes someone lock them up and then we release them 15 years later and we're stunned that they are not well integrated into society. The concept was straightforward. Teach ex-convicts to help themselves by helping each other. Mimi and co-founder John Meher, himself an ex-convict, designed a two-year course based around the academic year. Ex-prisoners would live together, educate each other and support themselves through work. Delancey Street would be self-funding, like San Patriano, relying on income from the businesses its residents created. After two years, residents graduate with an education, job skills and self-esteem. They're ready for the real world. 
Like the real world, each new arrival at Delancey Street has to start at the bottom. Basic work, washing, sweeping, cleaning. It's a humbling starting point, and if they're caught in illegal activities, they're kicked out for good. There are no second chances when it comes to drugs and violence. They have to become accountable, responsible. They stand and take the consequences of all their actions. As the 500 residents earn status, they move up the ranks within Delancey Street's businesses. They work with the moving company, printing facilities, retail sales, car services, and other industries. But perhaps Delancey Street's crowning achievement is its three-star restaurant and cafe. From the chefs to the waiting staff and dishwashers, the entire restaurant is run by ex-convicts. So if you start at the restaurant, you would start washing dishes, and the next semester you would move up to being a prep cook, and the next semester you would move up to being a line cook, and ultimately you could move up to become the head chef. The downside of bringing the simple lessons of San Patriano and Delancey Street to Britain is cash, commitment, and the good people needed to make it all work. The upside is the opportunity to rewrite lives interrupted and change them into lives of value, with no need to reoffend. Lives with real self-respect, with practical plans to turn things round, with a second chance. Lives with a chance, this time, to get it right. Tomorrow's people are not prepared to sit back and do nothing. And that's why we want people to work with us today. Tomorrow's people's more interested in people's destiny than their history. We all make mistakes and some people are lucky. We all make choices, but sometimes the choices are forced upon us. I believe that we all slipped. I slipped. And um, if I'm not going to be given another chance, then I might as well kind of, you might as well not let me back out into the system. It's hard being stereotyped as a criminal. We are criminals, I'm not denying that, but we are people as well. There's people that are in higher positions that have slipped and they expect another chance, so why shouldn't I? I would take it with both hands and I wouldn't let go. Well, I'm an outsider, outsider.